I pronounce this batch delicious. Everyone asked for it, so here we have Jack Horner, and we have a little bit of Jiminy as well. I thought it would be really interesting if we take a look at how many traits of antisocial personality disorder does Jack Horner actually display. So there's four criteria. We're going to go through the first criteria, which you have to have one of the following seven, but it seems like Jack has more of them. I don't know if he has actually all seven, and I don't know if they would be at the level of a diagnostic. This is just a really short kind of subset. We get a snippet of a few minutes of Jack Horner, not his full life. I think some of them he presents much more and some of them he presents much less. I've chosen some different scenes where he's shown these traits, but we can go through and debate it among ourselves. Are those unicorn horns? Baby unicorn horns. Half as heavy, twice as sharp. Savage. The lack of remorse for action. So it's not just that he's killed unicorns, but they're like baby unicorns. So I think that this one is a really good one to show that he does not have a lot of remorse and his levels of empathy are really low. Now, again, I'm going to just go through it that just because someone does not have the same amount of empathy as someone else, it does not mean that they're sociopathic. It doesn't mean that they're dangerous or violent or are going to not be a contributing member of society. Though for Jack Horner, definitely all of those things. Ever hear of the Midas touch? Cool dibs! <laughs> Oh no! Can I do pleasure doing it? Number two, lying or manipulating others for profit or amusement. I think that in this scene it's kind of both lying, manipulating, profit, and amusement all wrapped up in one. And you can say, well, it's kind of a smart way for him not to have to pay anyone money, yet they still get what they were owed, but it's definitely not what they had expected. Jack Horner really is looking out for the one person, himself. Everyone else is just a means to an end for him. And so if he can get people to do what he wants, one is it makes him feel more powerful and he doesn't have a lot of innate joy, so he often gets joy from watching the suffering of others or to be able to work systems to make the most out of something, like the world is a game, and he wants to be the winner from it. Excalibur! 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 Yeah, I couldn't get this rock off of it, but it's still pretty cool, right? Number three, impulsive behavior. He's not gonna wait for things, he's gonna take whatever he wants. And for Jack, I think that that's the way that he's always lived his life. He's always been rich, things have just come to him easily, and if he wanted something, he got it. And if not, he would be angry or have a fit in order to get his way. For people like Jack Horner, he doesn't have a lot of delay in gratification, which is kind of interesting because delay in gratification is actually one of the main signs for later life happiness and success. Success. And for a lot of skills, you have to take a lot of time or effort or dealing with failure and difficulty in order to be successful. Yes, I know Jiminy is falling off. Stop being judgmental. All right, magical locust. Uh, I'm not a magic locust. What are you then? Some sort of demon grasshopper? Well, what do you do? Well, I, I, I judge you. I sit on your shoulder and judge your Oh, I was gonna give him a hat and I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot your hat, baby. Actions and the quality of your character. I'm your conscience. I really did overpack. I, I love the addition of Jiminy Cricket because for a lot of us, we live our lives through our conscience. Sometimes also it's more of a negative self-talk and sometimes it's this supportive voice that we have inside of our head for those of us that are lucky. But I think it's really cute because it gives the counterpoint to how much Jack Horner does not have this naturally. Oh, aren't you gonna help him, Jack? I'm not really stressing about the manpower. These babies are gonna get me that wish even after the whole team is dead and gone. Number four, failure to obey laws, killing people, not caring how many people die, that would definitely fit into this pretty well. Most of us are not following every single law. That doesn't mean that we have to be rigid about things. And if we break laws, that does not mean that we have antisocial personality disorder. A lot of this, again, is unfortunate that antisocial personality disorder is really kind of based on the effect of that. But the reason that you break a law makes a huge difference to whether you're antisocial or not. If you are breaking a law to be able to take care of people or because you find a law 
unjust. That could be the right thing to do, and that could be because you are empathic and caring and are doing something for the greater good. Now, Jack, is your conscience. I oh, my word, it's the noble phoenix. She's a symbol of rebirth and the eternal... I love how Jiminy Cricket is just so positive and sees this as something that's rebirth. I think that for a lot of people that are more on the caretaker side, we always want to see good in people and hold out hope and we carry that and so I just love that he sees this and goes through this entire thing about how this could be a change for Jack Horner for good and rebirth. Pretty boss flamethrower, right? I really have my work cut out for me on this one. Especially caretakers, they often caretake people that are more on the analytical spectrum or less of feelers and want them to feel and care for things and try to fix things. And so it can sometimes be frustrating when all of that care and love is not being returned or someone isn't going to change. Unfortunately, in order to change, you have to want to. And there are a lot of people high on the spectrum that are happy with the way that they are. They're happy with not feeling so much, not needing people, being able to be solitary and successful that way. And yes, you can have antisocial personality disorder and be successful contributing member of society and do really well with yourself and the people that are around you. And sometimes it's also, of course, as with everything else, misdiagnosed. Make with the map or we'll see what the unicorn horn really does. You're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you, Jack? Yeah, in the face, why? This also shows that lack of remorse for actions, not feeling any guilt. Not only does he, he say that he's gonna shoot the puppy in the face, but he doubles down on it. He's proud of this. People can sometimes do something horrible and really just say that, yeah, I can do what you can't do. And in a lot of cases, that can be very effective because if you'll do things that other people won't, you may actually get ahead, of course, at the cost of other people around you. I hear you falling off. A little bit more about that conscience. Interestingly enough, not everyone even has an inner voice. It's something that some people have. Hearing it like a voice, other people see it through images. And there are some people that don't have an inner voice, visual or auditory at all. And I think that for people that have that, it's really, really strange. And for people that don't, it's strange for people that do have it. We often think that everyone sees and experiences the world the same way that we do, but it's very, very different, such as people with synesthesia. They see things through colors and shapes. So just because you interpret the world in one way, that doesn't mean that other people will as well. And that also means that their reactions to certain situations may be completely different. When you're setting out a plan or doing something, you want to be able to try to see the world through other people's eyes instead of the way that you see it. What do you think, Bug? Do I wait for the cats to steal the map and then kill them? Or do I just kill everybody all at once? I'm starting to think you don't appreciate the value of a life. Ah. So at first I put this one for number five, patterns of irresponsibility. And I guess killing people People making this huge plan. I can't say that this is the most responsible thing, but I think that I'm kind of stretching this one. I don't see him being, well, I guess all of it is kind of irresponsible, but for what his goals are and the way that he's going about it, he has thought out a plan. He's getting rid of things that he doesn't care about. And so, well, I think that this is one that he has the least of. It's also one of the least like this one goes to a lot of people that have ADHD. It's the one that's the lowest on antisocial. It's more not being good at organizing, but I think he's kind of responsible. Oh, it feels wrong to say that, but you can let me know if there's one that you see that would be a closer link to patterns of irresponsibility. All right, bring it over. Whoa. Well, you know what they say, can't bake a pie without losing a dozen men. <laughs> Number six, disregard for the safety of self and others, cause he made a bridge out of people and then walked along it himself, cause he completely didn't care and had the entire bridge go down. He doesn't even feel bad about it. The one thing that will make me happy. Oh, what's that? All of the magic in the world <laughs> for me. No one else gets any. No, that actually won't make him feel happy because he's a 
pit of emptiness, a black hole. No matter how much of other things he shoves into it, when you're lacking something, when you feel this need, this hunger to have to hoard, there is never enough things in the world to be able to actually make you happy. Things will make you happy for the moment, but these things are ephemeral. They're not something that you get to keep. And so Jack will have to keep on trying to find things to give him that dopamine rush because it doesn't actually hold. People that have that level of kind of a malignant negativity kind of go into a room and those are the soul suckers. They kind of suck all the happiness out of the room and nothing is safe. And when you're around someone like that, you usually feel drained of energy after you've left the room. Yes, Colin Robinson, I am thinking of you. Others may have a Colin Robinson in their lives too. And if you are the Colin Robinson around you, work on it, work on being more positive, seeing the world in a better way, looking at the things that you should be proud of, going through different affirmations and being happy with what you have. But you have to practice it. It's a skill like everything else. Whatever you're doing at any moment, you will be getting better at it. But only if you practice that, you practice more time being negative than being positive, you're gonna get better at being negative as with anything else. How do you like these apples? Blow up already. Maybe it's time to bury the hatchet. Number seven, it exemplified it the best of any of the scenes that he had, which is irritability and aggression. And for him, it happens when things don't go his way because he's used to having them immediately. When you are used to getting everything all the time, when everyone's so scared of you that they're gonna listen immediately, you're not used to people saying even no to you. So you might even end up with things like Jack Horner having a little bit of a fit because his plan isn't going exactly how he wishes it to. And often also what happens is then they start to project or blame this behavior on other people instead of taking responsibility for themselves because it is so much better to be able to blame someone else than blame yourself for the things that are happening around you. So even when they do take responsibility, it's usually they're taking responsibility, but if you hadn't done A, B, or C, I wouldn't have had to do this to you in the first place. Please don't make that wish. They're such pools of vulnerability. So cute how you think that would work on me. Don't you know I'm dead inside? I just put it at this end because it kind of epitomizes all of the different things that he doesn't feel things, that he doesn't feel empathy or care or love. What he feels are rage and other pseudo emotions, which makes it difficult to be able to understand, cope with, and interact with other people. Lots of people have done these things. There's also a certain amount of extremism and I think that a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy about antisocial personality disorder because a lot of it is based on the effect of your behavior but not actually the intention of your behavior. And so because of that focus, that it ends up on the end result and not the reasons that you did that, I think that there's a lot of false positive, a lot of people that have been through a lot of very difficult lives that may have been diagnosed and misdiagnosed because of that. And that's why there's a lot of controversy with antisocial personality disorder. Learning a new skill is a wonderful way to hone your skills and get you prepared for whatever life has to throw at you. Baby unicorn horns, I'm just saying. For some wonderful new courses, check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant makes college level courses available to everyone. Each course is designed for high velocity learning to help you stay focused and reach your goals fast. Brilliant makes learning like a game with fun features to help you stay challenged and compete with others, all with helpful explanations along the way so you are never left guessing. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks, and so many more with new courses added monthly. I've so far covered their courses on algebra, logic, geometry, and I found all of them really engaging and they didn't leave me feeling like I didn't know enough because I could ramp it up or slow it down depending on my learning. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer, for free. For a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Georgia Dow or click on the link in the description and the first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click on the button on the screen or head on over to brilliant.org slash Georgia Dow. Clicking on that button really does help out this channel and thank you to Brilliant and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.
Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and what would be the scenes that you would choose and the traits that you think which best exemplifies Jack Horner.